Hi, I'm Anders from Embedder Artis. This is a Getting Started presentation for our IMX developers kits. If you already have bought the kit, congratulations! I will show you how to get up and running in just a few minutes. If you consider buying a kit, here you can see what you get. I will use the IMX7 Dual Developers Kits in this video, but this presentation is valid for all of them. There are only small differences between them at this overview level. Let's start with opening the box to see what's in there. Here we have an um, IMX COM board, the IMX7 Dual in this case, mounted on the COM carrier board. This is a 12 volt power plug with different AC plugs to cover all corners of the world. This is a cable for powering the board, an ATX plug in one end and a 2.1 mm barrel connector in the other end. A micro B to A USB cable. A UR to USB bridge cable from FTDI. A small debug interface board. Two different cables with microfit connectors for the COM carrier board. Last but not least, this is a product serial number that we have here. I recommend you to create a support account on our website and register this serial number on that account. Then you get access to additional valuable material. Next, let me give a quick hardware overview of the COM carrier board. It's a board that has been designed for integration, but it's also used in our developers' kits as a general carrier board. All external interface connectors are gathered along one board edge to simplify mechanical integration. There are also many internal connectors. Details about this can be found in the COM carrier board uh, datasheet. Initially, to get started, only a few connectors are of interest. This is the ATX power supply connector. Here we have three different UR channel connectors, typically for accessing the system console. Additionally, although not a connector, it's good to know that this button closest to the corner is the reset push button. Before we power up the system, you need to prepare to get access to the system console. Connect the FTDI cable to correct UR channel. Check details for your specific kits. For 6 Solo X, 6 Ultra Light, and both versions of 7 Dual, it is the connector closest to the Ethernet connectors. For 6 QR and 6 Dual Light, it is the middle one. Make sure to turn the cable correct, the black wire to the right. So it shall look like this. black wire to the right and the connector closest to the Ethernet since this is a 7 dual. As a side note, for processors with an extra Cortex-M4 core, an additional of these UART interfaces is used as console for the application running on the Cortex-M4. See respective combo documentation for details. To access the console, connect the FTDI cable to your PC. Normally, Windows will automatically recognize the cable and install necessary drivers. If that doesn't work, download and install the drivers from FTDI's website. See the Getting Started documentation for details. Next, start the terminal or console application. We recommend TerraTerm. See the Getting Started documentation for details. Here we have TerraTerm. Connect to the virtual COM port that is created by the FTDI cable. Select 115.2 kilobits per second and 8 data bits, no parity and one stop bit for the connection. OK, now it's time to get the system up and running. Connect the power supply via this cable. Let's do that and see the result. First, the U-Bot bootloader starts and after a few seconds, the Linux kernel. Now we are up and running. The Linux kernel has booted and you are requested to log in. The default login is root and the password is pass. There are three more connectors that are worth mentioning. This is the USB OTG connector that you might need in some situations.
for example, to download or deploying new images when updating the Linux kernel, file systems or the bootloader. Here we have the Ethernet interfaces. Some COM boards have one interface and some two. Check your documentation for details how the connectors are numbered. It's not the same for all COM boards. And finally, this is the debug interface board with a 10 pos FPC cable. Let me just quickly show you how to connect the debug adapter. Just plug in the FPC cable like I have done here. And then you plug it in like that. Um, just turn the FPC the same way in both ends and you are good to go. The debug connector on the COM board can be found on different places on different COM boards. Now that you're up and running, we recommend you to have a look at the other documents and presentations that are available on Embedded Artist websites. This will help you get a better understanding of the hardware as well as the available software development resources. There is a lot, and to name a few. There is a document about working with Yocto to build Linux that describes how to build a bootloader, Linux kernel, and file systems yourself. We have a document that shows how you can test the hardware by using utilities in U-Boot and or Linux. We have a document about security considerations that for example describes how to enable secure boot. We have a document that describes how to build and run applications on the Cortex-M4 core that exist on some COM boards with heterogeneous system architecture. We have a document that describes the process of adding a display to the IMX developers kit. The different display interfaces and how to connect to them are presented. Al available commands in the bootloader and Linux kernel are also presented. If you have any questions, want to discuss your product requirements, need assistance in integrating the COM board into your product, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching.